You may find it scary. How can someone with a monthly salary of 4,000 to 5,000 yuan owe 70,000 to 800,000? Today, a 24-year-old girl told me that she used a credit card to speculate in stocks in 2015 and lost money. She paid 50,000 yuan, but she didn't dare tell her family. After that, she chose to use credit cards to pay off the debt. Later, the interest rate was too high and she couldn't pay it off, so she used internet loans like Alipay services. She kept doing this for five years. Now she is in debt of more than 700,000 yuan. Her monthly salary is only 4,500 yuan. What do you think she should do? What should I do? My situation is similar to hers. I regret it very much. If I hadn't applied for this credit card or stopped using the credit card in time, I would not be in debt of more than 2 million now. Credit cards are easy to use, but it's very painful when the payment is due. The number of debtors in China has reached a new high. On the first day of 2024, 8,613,344 people in China faced enforcement for breach of trust. If it were only 800 people, you can blame individuals. But if 8 million people face enforcement, the embarrassment may lie with our credit reporting system. In 2020, 740,000 people faced collections enforcement. By 2021, this number soared to 6.38 million people and it increased to 7.18 million people in 2022. As early as February 2023, the number of people facing enforcement for dishonesty had exceeded the 8 million mark, an increase of up to 400 times. Credit cards, once popular among young people, have now become time bombs. A bank worker said in his video that if someone no longer has the ability to pay off his credit card, he should just give up because it's impossible to repay it in this lifetime. With 10 years in the credit card industry, I can confidently say this. If you owe 400000 and earn between 10000 and 15000 monthly, without any other significant income, you'll never clear your credit card debt. Recent reports from China indicate that young people are changing their spending habits. They are shifting away from spending money they don't yet have, causing a stagnation in the credit card business. Since March, several banks in China, including Bank of Communications, Changsha Bank, and Zhejiangmin Tai Bank, have announced that they'll stop issuing co-branded credit cards. The affected cards include the Bank of Communications Demon Slayer-themed card and its campus version, three JD Finance co-branded cards from Changsha Bank, and four JD co-branded credit cards from Mintai Bank. Co-branded credit cards are issued by banks in collaboration with businesses or brands. Banks collaborate with various strategic partners such as airlines, telecommunications companies, chain hotels, supermarkets, and malls to offer co-branded cards. These cards offer greater benefits in terms of cash back, points redemption, birthday gifts, etc., compared to regular credit cards, making them popular among Chinese consumers. A banking industry insider commented on the suspension. This situation is similar to the suspension of the Bank of Communications Walmart credit card at the end of last year. Due to frequent closures of Walmart stores, many Walmart gift cards became unusable, so there was no need for co-branded credit cards. In other words, the main reason for the disappearance of these credit cards is the low number of users, leading banks to cancel them. Prior to this, Bank of Communications had a co-branded credit card with Walmart for 18 years. In the 10th year, 4 million co-branded cards were in circulation, making it one of the largest supermarket cards in the market. In fact, as early as the end of 2023, several banks, including Bank of Communications, China Merchants Bank, China Postal Savings Bank, and Shanghai Pudong Development Bank had suspended some co-branded cards. China Merchants Bank even stopped 15 co-branded credit cards at once. It's not just co-branded credit cards that are declining. The entire credit card industry in China is shrinking. According to a report by the People's Bank of China, by the end of the third quarter of 2023, the number of credit cards and integrated debit and credit cards had declined for four consecutive quarters. Within a year, the number of credit cards evaporated by 28 million. In 2017, the year before the start of the China-U.S. trade war, China's credit card growth was at its peak. In China, credit cards are an important tool for banks to develop their consumer base, mainly earning revenue through interest and fees. The number of credit cards issued and consumer behavior directly affect bank revenue. 
Many people have anticipated the decline of credit cards. Young people's rejection of them is a popular topic on Chinese social media. Ding Ding, a woman in her 20s who works in Shanghai's media industry, revealed that she and her colleagues rarely use credit cards anymore. She said, "I've been burned before, and now I've realized that saving money is the way to go. If you have a credit card, it's hard to keep track of your budget, and it's easy to overspend." She also mentioned a friend from her hometown who has been budgeting by using cash and staying away from electronic payments. In fact, there are many people who share Ding Ding's perspective. Data shows that 35% of young people no longer use credit, and most of those who do spend less than 20% of their income. Although banks try to lure young people with co-branded cards or attractive car designs, it seems young people aren't biting. Some netizens also believe that credit cards can no longer attract young people because there are many other forms of borrowing now, and credit cards are not the most cost-effective option among them. Credit card interest rates are much higher than what you earn from bank investments. For instance, I bought an iPhone with a credit card for 10,000 yuan. Now, a year later, I need 11,000 or even 12,000 yuan to pay it off. Why? Because banks push credit cards due to high commissions, despite offering initial interest-free periods. But the overall interest remains high. It's outrageous. Credit cards reveal themselves as a scam. Platforms like Alipay, Huawei, Jiebei, and JD.com's Baitiao offer interest-free options with much lower rates. So why do young people still opt for credit cards with such exorbitant rates? In addition to the high interest rates on credit cards, most users who have paid off their credit card debts say that they will not continue to use credit cards because once they fall into the trap of credit cards, it's hard to get out. Many young consumers enjoy pre-income consumption, but gradually find themselves unable to afford it. This young woman explained what she calls young people's debt craze. I now realize how happy people are without a penny of debt. I read a report yesterday. The report showed that there are 700 to 800 million people in China who are in debt, and among them, 420 million people have defaulted. I find it incredible. I don't understand why so many people in China are in debt. Many say it's the economy lately. I found the report very scary. The report said that people with higher education owe more than those with lower education, and 87% of them are people born in the 1990s. After calculation, the per capita debt is actually 250,000 yuan. For an ordinary person, carrying a debt of 250,000 yuan is really crushing. So what is it that empties the wallets of young people? This should be the time for young people to make money. So why do they owe so much money? She said that credit cards are popular with young people. When they don't have enough money, they default to using their credit cards, spending money they don't have. Moreover, live streaming sales are very popular now. Many live streamers persuade young women to treat themselves by buying things. Men are encouraged to buy things to maintain their image. Some viewers may spend 5,000 to 6,000 yuan in a single live streaming shopping session. Then the live streamer will say that this shopping session can be paid in 12 interest-free installments. Though each installment may only be a few hundred yuan, the debt snowballs until one day it becomes crushing. Many young people initially incurred small debts, but found themselves unable to control their spending. As their debts accumulated, they struggled to afford repayments and resorted to paying only the minimum amount. However, the high interest rates and fees meant that their debts continued to increase. To cope, some opened additional credit cards, contributing to the overall rise in credit card issuance and debt levels. This cycle ultimately led to widespread indebtedness among young people. The more debtors who cannot repay, the greater the risk that banks will not be able to recover the funds. This is also why banks are continuously tightening the number of credit cards young people can use. Some also speculate that the number of credit cards is declining because the middle class is disappearing. In China, the middle class is the main consumer of credit cards, and only when their income reaches a certain standard do they dare to use credit. But as the Chinese economy continues to decline, the number of people spending beyond their means has bottomed out. As the credit card industry tightens, Chinese media has begun to spin this phenomenon, saying that Chinese people have collectively saved 58.24 trillion yuan in four years. From early 2020 to January 2024, Chinese households netted approximately 58 trillion yuan into bank accounts, with 52% of it in fixed deposits. 
There is also news from the People's Bank of China that in 2022 and 2023, Chinese households contributed 17.8 trillion yuan and 16.7 trillion yuan in deposits, respectively, the largest increase in deposits in two years since statistics have been recorded. If these data are true, then the total number of new deposits in these four years is equivalent to 10 years' worth of deposits from 2009 to 2019. The veracity of the savings rate is being challenged online, with many arguing that young people have to moonlight to save money. In addition to cutting expenses, keeping accounts, and having side jobs, young people are living like the elderly do and doing extreme penny pinching. These tactics involve depositing money in regions where the interest rates are higher rather than in the cities where they live. Many young people online have expressed that they do not have as much savings as the official data claims. One netizen said, The official data seems a bit fake to me. I've been working for more than 10 years, and I can't save a penny. Another said, I'm dragging down China's savings. Not only have I not saved a penny, but I've also contributed to huge losses. Another added, This is the savings of rich Chinese. Ordinary people don't have any savings. How many people have debt and don't know the extent of it? This post was shared by over 100 people within three hours, showing that it resonated deeply. Some experts say that the official data from the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, is not trustworthy. Liao Xiaohua, former chief compliance officer of a Chinese asset management company, told the media, In recent years, China's unemployment rate has risen sharply. Many companies have closed down, including foreign trade and platform companies, which have laid off a large number of employees. Many people are out of work, so there should be a decline in savings. However, the data now shows a large increase in deposits in 2022 and 2023, which is illogical. Chinese issues expert Wang He believes that even if we exclude the possibility of falsified official data, a sharp increase in household savings is not a good thing in the current political and economic environment. He said, The significant increase in household savings indicates that the wealth gap in China has greatly increased over the past three years of the pandemic, and the middle class has been hit hard. It does not actually mean an increase in savings for ordinary people. He analyzed that according to official data, in 2023, the wages of Chinese residents were lower than the consumption index. This indicates that from a per capita perspective, personal consumption cannot be sustained solely by wages, so the growth savings must be influenced by a small number of people becoming rich. Wang He also pointed out that if household savings increase, it indicates that people are unwilling to invest and are even less willing to consume. He said, those who want to consume don't have the money, and those who have the money don't have the desire to consume. The entire Chinese society has a T-shaped structure, with a small middle class, few top wealthy individuals, and the vast majority are low-income people. The vast majority of people do not have the ability to consume sufficiently, so there is no possibility of a rise in domestic demand. The lack of willingness to consume, as well as the lack of confidence in the future of the Chinese economy, are important reasons why no one wants to use credit cards, because managing every penny in your pocket is crucial to surviving in this poor economic environment. Taiwanese macroeconomist Wu Jialong believes that the CCP's current economic, stock market, real estate, and tax policies are ineffective. He said, even if Xi Jinping steps down now, it's probably too late to save the Chinese economy because the main confidence has already been lost by the CCP. Whatever trust the Chinese people had in this party is gone.